smack like down there. 10,000 likes and I will wear the, the Doki costume Why? for part two. Why do I do? Why do I do it? Stupid. This is a certified hood classic. Hey, I lost a little neck ribbon thing, so whatever. Hey, yo, it's me, Yub, and I hope you're getting what you need from this because it's never happening again. Doki Doki Literature Club plus part two. We didn't actually see any new content really in the first episode. I mean, the whole thing is you're supposed to pick the girl, right? We picked Natsuki the first time I ever played it, and I was about to pick Yuri, but the comments are like, Yub, you've already seen most of Yuri's stuff in your first playthrough. What about Sayori? So I think I'm gonna try to date Sayori. Oh yeah, also, look at this real quick. This happened when I was shutting the game down last time, but I wanna see that. How do I do this? So there's new stuff, side stories. Side stories are six stories of friendship unrelated to the events of the main game. It doesn't say that it's not canon, it just says it's unrelated. Let's do this real quick, yeah. I wanna see something new. With the new song? Oh, I might cry, and I don't know why. That's never seen before. They got vending machines? Who knew? Okay, everyone. The Literature Club is starting. Let's all have a seat and take attendance, okay? <sighs> I miss Debate Club. Who knew it would be so difficult to start a new club? This skirt is riding up, bro. How do y'all do this? I feel worse with every day that passes without anyone coming. So this is before anyone actually joined the literature club. It's an unrelated story, but it is in the universe. It actually happened, okay. I'm really starting to lose confidence. Monica is the only member of the literature club. Oh, you can't save during these, by the way. In the days that have passed, all of her efforts to recruit new members have been fruitless. Am I going about this wrong? Monica glances at one of her flyers. The headline is, do you like jazz? <laughs> Maybe nobody's into literature enough to pick it over their other club interests. I can't just rely on people liking literature. I need to sell them on a vision. A vision. But what kind? Monica rests her head on her desk deep in thought. <laughs> thought. D I'd like to be deep. Stop. There's no appropriate joke to me. Before she realizes it, the recent nights of staying up too late start to catch up, so she fell asleep. So quiet, the noise of the AC is soothing. Uh oh. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, I thought the lights was I thought the lights were going out. She was gonna be in school after dark. I'm like, uh. Um, hello? Sayori. Hey, Yori! It's Sayori. I'm here to join your club. I'm sure you're normal. I'm sure you're not evil. Right? Suddenly, a voice causes Monica to snap awake. Oh, oh uh, my gosh! I'm so sorry! I never do this! Hee <laughs> Is this the napping club? Yo, bet I'll sign up immediately. No, this is- Monica pauses, suddenly embarrassed to admit that this is in fact the literature- Why are you embarrassed? This is the literature club. Yay! I thought I got it wrong for a sec. I'm super sorry. It was like so unprofessional of me to do that. Don't apologize. <laughs> I do it all the time. Oh. Uh, did I miss the club meeting? Where is everybody? Well, about that. This is everybody. Really, just you. But we're getting more members. I'm working really hard on it. Hold on a sec. If it's just you, that means I get to be vice president. She's always thinking. Wait, vice president? What are your qualifications? Well, I'm better at napping than you, first of all. So maybe I should be president. Now you're just making fun of me. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. What was your name? Sayori. Okay, Sayori. I've been trying really hard on this club. I know you caught me at a weird time, but it's really disheartening to not be taken seriously. Chill out. It's 
fine. This jacket's gotta unbutton. I'm busting out of this thing. The buttons are on the wrong side. I can't. Yo, who wore it better? 2021 yub or 2017 yub? You can cast your vote. I care so much about this. I just want to find other people who do too. Oh no. I, I'm so sorry. I do care. I promise. I have a hard time being serious. <laughs> That's all. I didn't mean for it to hurt you. And I was joking about the vice president thing. I would make a terrible vice president. I mean, I'm sure that... Monica tries to say something reassuring, but it's difficult when she still doesn't even know much about Sayori. I'm sorry this isn't like a real club yet. Would you still be interested in joining after I found a few more members at least? Well, no. I want to join now. Really? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Besides, I can tell how hard you've been working. You're doing something amazing and you should be proud of it, you know? So let me help you turn something stressful into something fun. Yo, do we love Sayori right now? If nothing else, I'm good at that, so... <laughs> Honestly, how could I possibly say no? That's really sweet of you, Sayori. I'm Monica, by the way. Monica! That's such a cool name! Oh, now you're just trying to cheer me up. But you're smiling. <laughs> well, I didn't say it didn't work. Monica glances at the fly on her desk and realizes her name is already written on it. So what do we do first? Well, it's getting pretty late, isn't it? We can go home and try to come up with new ideas to recruit club members. I'm so bad at her accent, I'm sorry. I'm so bad at her accent that I gave her for no reason. I could do that. Cool. And I think I need to put some more thought into my vision for the club. You know, like a mission. My mission is to make everyone happy. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I need to think about it. Hey, do you like hugs? I guess so. Sayori suddenly pulls Monica into a friendly hug. Then let's go. Pre-COVID, guys. Pre-COVID. Sayori, where's your mask? Some people can really just use a hug sometimes. Besides, Sayori whispers loudly, Hug energy is what keeps me at my best. <laughs> hug energy. Monica laughs. Although Sayori is very different from her, Monica feels her spirits lifted. Maybe it's because she finally found another club member. But, well, I'm looking forward to tomorrow then. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to think really hard tonight about how to get more people. Yeah, me too. It's so cute. So it's just a little additional thing, right? That's it, right? There's more? I thought that was going to be it. A day passes. Time comes from Lit Club to reconvene. As president, Monica ensures she's the first to arrive. But she finds herself waiting longer than expected for Sayori. It's been 10 minutes already. Maybe she changed her mind. No, that can't be. She was so excited. I'm getting kind of worried. Suddenly, Sayori comes bounding through the door. In her hand, she's holding a sheet of paper. Sorry I'm late. I'm here. It's okay. Welcome back. And... Sayori spins over to Monica and deposits the sheet onto Monica's desk. Oh, what's this? Oh, she did a poem already? Take my hand by Sayori. Take my hand. Take me forward. Take me to your dreamland. Caution me to watch my step so I can't look back at my footprints. Climb the stairs ahead of me while I look up to you. The more I look forward, the more I look up, the more I can lend to you. If you can trust me to follow your pace, I'll trust you to set it. If you can trust me to lend you a smile, I'll trust you to return it. Take my hand, take me forward, take me to your dreamland. Kirby, hey, this is really good. You wrote this, Sayori? Of course I did. Wait, wait, no, that's the wrong side of the paper. Huh? I wasn't ready to share that. I'm so embarrassed. That wasn't an accident. Monica flips over the paper. Written on the other side is a list of ideas for recruiting new members. Oh, so this is what you meant to show me. But I'm curious now. Do you write poetry often? I do, but I'm sure I'm not anywhere near as good at it as you are. <laughs> really? I'm actually terrible. I've never written anything I was happy with. Like, I always read it again after a week, and I'm like, wow, this is so stupid. Stupid, isn't it? I don't know. It's like the dramatic version of me doesn't agree with the person I want myself to be. Or something like that. Aw, you should have more confidence in yourself. You're the literature club president. <laughs> I guess you're not wrong there. I need to, like, set a good example or whatever. You know, I can envision the club doing something like that. Doing what? You know, like sharing poems we write, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I would love that. It's such a good way to learn about other people. It's like we have so many emotions that we can't express usually. 
but you can when it's in a poem, right? Yeah! I think that's helping me form a more cohesive vision for the club. So I'm glad you showed me. Well, even though it was by accident. Me too. I felt embarrassed at first, but now it feels kind of good that someone else read it. I'll try to show you more of them in the future. I'd love that. Oh, jeez, I'm getting distracted. Do you want to go over this recruitment brainstorm together? My brain stormed so hard. It was like a brain hurricane. My brain is a natural disaster. <laughs> Sayori, that's terrible. Anyway, let's take a look at the list. Make cupcakes. I was hungry. But it's a good idea, isn't it? Um, let me think about it. I mean, when will we have the chance to give people cupcakes? You know, like when they come into the club. What if we said we had free cupcakes on the flyers? I'm like, kind of worried that would bring in the wrong kinds of people, you know. Yo, are you body shaming right now? People would just come for the cupcakes and then leave. Ah, uh, nobody would do that. That'd be mean. But you know, I want to find people who are really into literature. Even if they don't know it yet. Let's see, the next thing on the list. Hunt for people reading books. I don't think I get it. Like, go around school and find people who are reading books, you know? Like in the morning or during lunch. And we tell them to check out the literature club. Well, the problem with that is like, wouldn't most people reading books just be doing it for an assignment or something? How would we know if they're just reading for fun? Well, we could ask them. But then we'd be bothering people who are trying to do schoolwork. I didn't think about it. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I'm just pooping all over your idea. You're coming up with a lot more things than I can. Oh, your next idea is to hand out flyers rather than just put them on the wall. I definitely like to start doing that. I'm useful. <laughs> uh, I never said you weren't. <laughs> just need to think. What would we tell people when handing them out? How about check out the literature club? I don't want to just be like, join the literature club. Let's figure out how we can better engage people. What if you told them about club activities and stuff? What activities? Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be my job to come up with that right. A vision for the club. Okay, Sayori, pretend you're a normal person. <laughs> okay, what do you mean? W wait, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> you know, like a random passerby who's getting a flyer. How would you react to the idea of a literature club? Hmm, probably like, literature is stupid. I'm doing the anime club. What the heck? <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking of a friend. She means us. Okay, what if I said that we, like, do group reading and discuss together? I'd probably nap through that. That's you, Sayori. Yeah, but that doesn't really sound fun to most people anyways. We need to really catch their interest, you know? Ugh, this sucks. Why is it so hard? Monica, don't be sad. What do you like about literature, Sayori? Me? Well... Kind of what I said about the poem. I think it gives you the chance to express yourself. Like, express yourself in ways you can't normally when you're just doing your normal day, talking to your friends. I mean, we all have so many thoughts and feelings that we just don't get to share. You don't get, that's what therapy's for. It's like, intimate. Yeah. How do we get that across to people though? We could be like, express your true self. Be intimate with, don't put that on the flyer. Okay, that's kind of... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. What? What is it? I forgot all of my things in my classroom. I must have gotten too excited and rushed here. Rushed? But weren't... Oh, uh, never mind. You want to go get your stuff? I'll forget it if I don't do it now. <laughs> I'll wait for you then. Okay, it'll only take a second. Sari dashes out of the room, leaving Monica momentarily alone. Sometimes this game literally just feels like I just read. I'm just reading to you. That's what this is. Monica sighs and starts jotting her thoughts on a sheet of paper. Express yourself. Be who you want to be. Make new friends. Be intimate with us. <laughs> Discover a new you. Discover your heart. No. Write your heart out. No. Write into your heart. Write the way into your heart. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart. Wow, that's lame. <laughs> Monica! Uh, ah! You startled me. Sorry, but it's something important. On the way to my classroom, there was a girl reading a book. Reading a book? Let's hurry and recruit her. Wait, are you sure she's not just doing homework? I could tell she was really into it. It's going to be Yuri for sure. Well, I guess we could take a look. Monica grabs one of her flyers and stands up. 
The two depart the classroom, with Sayori leading the way. This way! You don't have to run. <laughs> Sayori leads Monica over to our particular classroom, then lowers her voice to a whisper. See? In here. Monica peers through the window. Sure enough, there's a girl sitting alone, intently reading a book. I feel like a creep doing this. You should go inside and talk to her. Hey, you're the president. I'd probably scare her away. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Monica takes a deep breath, then timidly enters the classroom. That was fast. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Why, what happened? Um, well, I entered the classroom. She didn't even look up from her book. So I just kind of left the flyer on her desk and walked out. <laughs> That's kind of cute. But I'm sure she'll see it and want to join the club. I hope so. Shall we head back? The two head back to the club room, Sayori feeling rather accomplished and Monica still feeling a little embarrassed. Upon returning, Monica and Sayori resume their strategy meeting. They discuss various different kinds of recruitment tactics from professional to silly. After going through Sayori's list and with Monica coming up with ideas of her own, the two end in a better spot than where they began. Well, I'd say today was pretty productive, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we're starting to make some progress. I can't wait to get new members. Hey, what's this? Sayori peers at the sheet of paper Monica was jotting on earlier. Oh, don't mind that. I was just thinking to myself. Join the literature club right the way into your heart. That's so cute. <laughs> I thought it was a little overdramatic. But, Sari pauses and thinks for a moment. You know, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. What do you mean? Like, I don't know, I feel like I can tell from talking to you today. Seems like you're always afraid of doing something wrong. Yeah, but would you call yourself a perfectionist? Yeah, I definitely am. I mean, I always have an idea in my head of how I want things to go. And it's like, I can't accept anything less than that. I feel you, Monica. I am just like that. But I think in the end, it helps me try my hardest at everything. So I don't think it's that bad. I also believe that. If you're hard on yourself, it can be kind of toxic, but it also drives you to do better. So you got to balance it. I don't know. I also am really hard on myself. Like with this club, we have such an opportunity to make it into exactly how we envision it. But it feels like we only have one shot. So I'm really afraid of it deviating from that. The vision. What's the vision? It's... Monica pauses to think and then shakes her head. She sighs. I don't know. I just want everyone to... Monica trails off. Smiling, Sayori taps her finger against a sheet of paper. Right the way into your heart. I think what you're trying to do is make the club that you need the most out of anyone. Well, you're the one who knows yourself best, of course. But I'm here to help. Monica returns Sayori's smile. Oh. I didn't know I could do that. Cool. It's sort of amazing how kind you are. We're really going to make this the best club ever. Sayori nods and the two remain silent for a moment, lost in thought. The only sound is the steady whisper of the air conditioner. And the only movement is the afternoon sunlight trickling its way in and out of the moving clouds. Sayori breaks a moment with a big yawn. Time to go home? You tell me. You're the president. Ha <laughs> ha. In that case, today's meeting is officially over. I look forward to tomorrow. Me too. Sayori beams and grabs her things. You can go on ahead. I need a few minutes. Oh, <laughs> I can wait. That's all right. I just want some alone time. Wow, we normalize setting boundaries. It's healthy. In that case, she waves enthusiastically at Monica. Good luck. Monica smiles and waves in return as Sayori sprints her way out of the club room. All alone, she sighs to herself. Takes a minute to zone out. She wasn't prepared for the self-reflection encouraged by Sayori, but she decides it was something she probably needed right about now. Like I said in the first video, I'm gonna try not to spoil things for people who haven't seen, but you know how Monica is. It doesn't seem like she was like that now. Does that make sense without saying too much? She seems normal. The club that I need the most. I don't get it. I just wanted to start a club with more passion. Something I could use to help lead people to happiness. Literature is the key to that, because it's the window to the real person inside of us. Underneath the person who's forced to always smile and blend in. The person who's forced to be... perfect. Hmm? Monica suddenly notices a folder on the floor by her desk. Did Sayori leave this? I hope it doesn't have a homework in it. Worried, Monica opens the folder. Poems. 
It's a folder of poems. Become the flower. A feeling of joy is a flower plucked from the ground. The color, the scent, it's so pretty in my hair. Every day, I pluck some flowers as those they grew just for me. A lifetime of peace and nourishment yanked away in an instant. All for me. All for joy. I need more. I need more joy. I need more happy. Pluck, pluck, pluck. Every day. Pluck, pluck, pluck. So pretty in my hair. Pluck, pluck, pluck. You're going to die. And you, too. Beneath my feet, a flower stands alone. It beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends? I look in every direction, and the field I stand in, the prosperous field, is a barren wasteland. The fruits of my labor, the carnage of my joy, and that is why I've decided I must become the flower. Sayori's really struggling, dude. What the? Wait, Sayori? It's a cry for help. Okay, so that's a side story. Oh, and trust part two. Okay, obviously I can't do that this time. I want to do like a side story at the start of each. Uh, there's only six of these, you know what I mean? Next video, we'll watch part two of that if that's cool with you. Let me know what you think. Files, characters. We can't do anything with these. Game. Look at this. Poemwords.tech. Oh, look at this. Sayori's winning. It's just listed. I like the way they did this. Insecure directory. This is a scratch disk. Do not use it to store sensitive or permanent things. If you need access to the files, proxy mail server, Paula. Wait, what? Who is that? Backup. What is this? Meeting overtime. You know who went on too many tangents again. I need to be more soda. These are Monica's notes, dude. File copy test from disposable drive. There is so much stuff in here. Tower keys. What? What? Tower rotation? Spaceship? Bro. Actually, what is going on? And then there's pictures. Are these supposed to be pictures we haven't seen? There she goes. I think we're going, we go all in on Sayori, bro. I want to try it. I've been recording for like 20 minutes. I'm just now booting the game up. Bro, what the heck? I'm playing, dude. Check this out. Ready? I did do all the poetry to impress um, Yuri, but I think we can still, let's try this because the comments were telling me, Let's say, help me say Ori. So I don't even pick one of these two. I say, help me say Ori. So you remember, uh, Yuri and Natsuki were really getting into it right now. N Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri. She turns away. Her expression is so defenseless I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Say Ori. Huh? Yeah. Uh, everyone's fighting is making say Ori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? My dude. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. Uh, I agree. Wow, y'all are both rude. You don't care how the way you're making other people feel. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why nobody likes- STOP! Natsuki, Yuri, you guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. She's about to cry, what? My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing, because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. Thank you for pushing me to, to do Sayori route because I have never seen this dialogue before. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone is so talented. So why are we fighting? B because Well, also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off at the speed of light. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori's vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader, and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing for me. <laughs> 
Nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own way, isn't she? You could say that again. She might be an airhead. Rude. But sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I'd hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to not agree. You better be careful. We got matching outfits. We're super cute right now. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. So he simps for Monica. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How do you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. I'd say it was worth it. This is all right. You know, mostly. My dude, how about you? Yeah, I, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little about the kind of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. Our character, the Master Manipulator. I nod to myself with newfound determination. My dude, you ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <coughs> Sayori beams at me. Truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. There you go, dude. He's been ignoring this super cute girl who lives right by him for his whole life just because he's always known her. You know what I mean? You guys are in college. It's time to let these feelings fly, Sayori. About what happened earlier. Huh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, only since a boy joined the club, you're ruining every- That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise, they're both wonderful people. You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Whew. You know, my dude, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. She's too nice, dude. I really think everyone likes you too. Yeah, that's the whole problem. That's... Uh, <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. Oh, <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Oh my gosh. We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. He's touching her a little bit. I said that to, more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. I don't think it matters that we try to impress Yuri with our first poem. I think we go ahead and do Sayori's poem now. All right, tears, perfect. Pain, perfect. Broken, got it. That's three for three, baby. What about music? Got him. See, not all of her words are all messed up. Some of them, they, some of them are happy but a lot of them are sad like look at this one sadness boom empty Ooh, killing it dude happiness oh i'm doing so good friends killing it i have like a way better handle on who sayori is than i thought i did bed is probably sayori right she's always talking about sleeping yeah family was sayori wasn't it yeah scars it could be yeah 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 yeah, yeah. melancholy is definitely her in one word Okay, well, I am wrong. That's the first one I got wrong, though. Laugh. Yep. Skirt. No! Melody. Bro, I'm I'm messing it up at the very end, for real? Death. Boom. Fun. Yep. Joy. Yes. Hurt. Got it. We've only missed a couple. Party. Yeah! I feel good about it. I don't think you have to get like every single one right. I think you just have to get enough. Another day passes. It's time for the club meeting already. Who cares what happened in school? No one. I gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, my dude. Yo, Sayori. Solid. <laughs> Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club. That's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. She likes you. I guess it's always the simple things with you. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? Yes. No thing. Why do I not get to choose? I'm, I would go. First of all, I like you. Second of all, I like snacks. Eh? That's, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. 
Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Uh-huh. Why that all of a sudden? No reason. I just want to look at it. Uh... Sayori nervously retrieves her purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins. Oh, she wanted us to pay for it. Well, then do it! <laughs> I knew it. I could see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before you got here. So either you're not hungry and you want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget you spent all your money so that I'd lend you some. I'm not trying to simp for these drawn characters right now, but why her waist literally looks like it's this big. You're built like Henry Stickman. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. So that only leaves one option. Ah, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Uh, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell my dude to let me borrow some money. That's, don't get me involved, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. Yo, I kind of liked Yuri in the first episode, and the more she talks, the less I like her. You should only buy what you can afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I get too absorbed in my book. Uh, haha. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. She's so nice. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! <laughs> Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Ugh. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Wow, now who's manipulative? Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face. Ah! Ow, what was, huh? A, a cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, <laughs> that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Natsuki, that's so nice of you to throw a cookie in my face. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it already. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> you're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, wraps her arms around her. She's so affectionate. Ah, uh, jeez. I get it. I get it. Cookie still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Uh. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. What? You can't just do that. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful Sayori runs away. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Huh? Natsuki glances around. Monica's not here? Ugh. Where's Monica anyways? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Huh. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do. She's pretty popular after all. Huh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Y'all so brainwashed by Monica. I mean, she's hot. She ain't that hot. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super sorry. Oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you weren't worried or anything. Huh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Uh, boyfriend? 
What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind. What held you up anyways? Ah, oh, well, my last period was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. Play something, play something. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! <laughs> that sounds cool, I guess. <laughs> I don't really care. I'm just kind of too cold to be here. So y'all do what you want. <laughs> Sorry. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, my dude. Monica smiles sweetly. Girl, you better quit messing around. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thank you. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. Other than Sayori literally biting a cookie out of Natsuki's hand. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining about it anyway, so I left it out. Looks like everyone already settled down. Sayori has somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. So do we get to pick who we check on? Is that what's going on here? It's been so long that I straight do not remember this part of the game. Man, looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself? I guess I could read some of that book Yuri gave me. I'm feeling too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and I end up listening to Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. See, I feel like this is the part of the game where last time we went and checked on Natsuki, right? I think this is when the whole closet scene with Natsuki happens. The problem is that the idea of literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm, that doesn't solve the problem though. What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place. And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sorry's taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, good point. In that case, you think food will do it? What kind? Well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! <laughs> Good thinking, Sayori. Natsuki would love to do that. You're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. <laughs> anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori's still her usual self, but therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind into things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Oh, oh, hey, whoa, how's it going? I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. What's up, girl? I nearly fell out of my chair. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping. This is not the napping club. See, they tie it in with the side stories. It's epic. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica heard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> I don't, I can't not read her laugh like that, I'm sorry. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better and you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Huh? Yeah, look like her collar's all, I never really caught these details of like her shirt's buttoned wrong, her collar's all wrinkled. She gets, re she gets ready in like four minutes. Not every day. Not very convincing, Sayori. How many days this week have you gotten up on time? That's uh, it's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. 
Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Huh? Sayori glances at herself. She's so gullible. How's it written on me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair's sticking all out around here. Ah! I run my fingertips down the side of her hair, trying to straighten it out. Bro, you can't just be touching people unless you mean it. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair's just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's toothpaste stain on your co- Where? There's no, there's not. I try to wipe the stain off with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. No one's gonna tell you about it. They don't want to embarrass you. But I will, because I'm a real jerk. Fortunately, I don't really care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Oh, she is the only one with an open blazer, huh? Except for me, hey. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? I can't tell if he's flirting or mean. And you know what sucks is girls love that. Huh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer up from the bottom. He's buttoning her clothes. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. That, that looks sus. This looks very suggestive. <coughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking about how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Huh? Don't, don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <coughs> it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my... They don't. They could just not say it. Don't, don't say that out loud. <coughs> anyway, you look much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. She hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. I mean, honestly, I agree because mine like, sucks, you know? My boobs are huge, so... <sighs> That's much better. She puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Well, it's exactly what you told her, but okay. And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because... If I had a boyfriend, he wouldn't let you do things like that. And you take care of me better than anyone else. She's blushing. Girl, I will hug that pencil neck. That's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Huh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up earlier. Only if you focus on getting in bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <coughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Ah, uh, but I, I was joking that time. And it's impossible to tell with you. Okay, everyone. Huh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! My dude, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Sari still trots away to retrieve her poem. Yeah, we'll get through the poems and then we'll end it there. Who should I show my poem to? Okay, we're definitely going Sayori this time. Oh my goodness. This is so good, my dude. Yeah, because I manipulated you to, to just put the words you like. Huh? I love it. Especially after yesterday's poem. Ugh, you're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Sayori. You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't just like it because I wrote it? Huh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a my dude poem, and that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. She's cute, bro. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, 
but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, it must be good. I'm not sure that's exactly how that works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> me neither. Ugh, why don't you at least try giving it some thought? You want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like happy poems. Wait, but sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. Melancholy. What's the word I'm looking for? Melancholy. Bittersweet. Same thing. Happy but sad. Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Look a little deeper, my dude. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that is unexpectedly poetic. It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. <laughs> Thanks, my dude. I should go write that down. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles by Sayori. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle, a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my lock front door. Wow, bars, Sayori. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards on the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, echo, echo inside my head. So she takes from herself. She's feeling like she takes from herself to build everyone else up. And there's like nothing left. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. I've really been in touch with my feels lately. I can see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe just because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good. You should be proud. Thanks, my dude. I feel like... I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those things. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. I'm very glad we're doing Sayori route. I think that I'm much more pleased. Let's show it to Monica next. Hi again, my dude. How's the writing going? It's all right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. All right, I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? That's so weird. weird. You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Oh, well, we may be good friends, but 
Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm, well, that may be the case, but maybe there's also some similarities you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you, sounds like the two of you really care about each other. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm, you sure you're not reading into it too much? Ha <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. In any case, Siori's writing has a kind of gentle feel to it. I can tell she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected, right? Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyways, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Yo, she's already going off the deep end, bro. Huh. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I don't know. I never said that. Do not delete me. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Oh, I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Pizza, duh. Sometimes asking what a poem's about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyways, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> game? I don't know that I'm in a game. I'm definitely not self-aware. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. All right, let's go Yuri, second to last. This is pretty good, my dude. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently everyone writes. So I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have a, well, an example of that. If you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this a poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me, her, hands me, hand, hands, hands it to me. The Raccoon by Yuri. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies, tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows ex excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. 
very clearly about her cutting herself. The raccoon is like her need to feel that. I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. Yeah, I see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't even begin to imagine what the poem's about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I don't even know what you mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because they're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, my dude? Well, yeah, I guess so. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now. I'm glad you're such a good listener. Okay. It's Natsuki time. Get ready, vocal cords. You're about to hurt. Huh. Well, I can admit it's better than the last one. It's nice to see you putting in some effort. Well, that's good. Come to think of it. This kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. You think so? Yeah. I guess you've been friends for her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as a type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, how can someone so, uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Wow, that was a little unnecessary. Think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she'd probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you mine. Yeah. Amy Likes Spiders by Natsuki. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy Likes Spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. It's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg real bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy's got a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Natsuki, what? Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's poem. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think it was the best I could do. No, no, of course not. Anyways, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. Screw Amy, I hate her. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. You know people like- Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about her. It's about how everyone thinks my- It doesn't matter. It could be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone's got some kind of weird hobby, a guilty pleasure, something you're afraid if people find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But it just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Wow, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something like that today too. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers, too. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel weird about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt she's got some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki's got trouble finding the words. I guess I should try to not be so mean. If she feels insecure about her weird behavior, I mean... I always hate when people make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she learned a lesson. 
I mean, I'd say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one tomorrow, so look forward to it. Okay, Natsuki, okay. I've been talking for like an hour and a half straight right now. My, my throat is dying. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems. I've got something extra planned today. So if everyone could come sit at the floor. This about the festival? Well, sort of. We really have to do something for the festival. It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and stop it here because I think it's a place that makes perfect sense. And this, I, my throat is killing me. So if there's something I need to know, guys, if I'm about to mess this up, if I'm about to miss something, please let me know. We're going Sayori route. Help me without spoiling anything. I need you. Well, all right, guys. Thank you so much for being here for DDLC Plus Part 2. If you want to see Part 3, smack like. It helps me know that you like something when you click on the button that says, I like this. Anyways, thank you so much for being here. Patreon supporters that have financial support every month. Mind-blowing. Helpful. Thank you. And thank you to you just for sitting on your bum and watching this. All right, guys. I'm going to take off. Make sure you keep that chin up, work hard, and believe in yourselves. And as always, have a bye five. Sorry these videos are so long, but there's just not a good place to stop.